Howdy, hello there, good buddies. Your old pal Clayton Patterson for the Clayton Patterson Show on Eight Ball Radio. And today I have my guest, Mayor M. M. Sarah. M. M. Sarah. Stands for Mary Magdalene. That's right. My given name is Mary Magdalene. Can you believe I'm, it, Clayton? Of course, and I love you with that hat. You know, if I wasn't Isn't married to Elsa, I'd be all over you, baby. With that hat, you got the you're the crumb in the crumb pie. <laughs> when, when I wear my <laughs> well, that's not the right thing. You're the peach in the peach pie. That's even better, the right? Pie. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking after when I wear crumb, this you know, hat down, and everything. guys, people come up and say Clayton Patterson. And I say right. yes. Yeah, we've been friends and neighbors for God knows over thirty right. years. Over thirty years. I mean, Annie. You, I, I live a block away. You live, and what building do you live? One thirty-two Ludlow. One four three Ludlow. One four three between Staten and Remington. Yeah, yeah. No, was that the building Anna lived in? Anna. Anna was the uh, was the beautiful Dominican. Iris. Iris, yes. Iris Anna, yes. Iris lived in. Yeah, Iris. Uh, her father had been put to jail for murder, and she was a, a beautiful girl, and she could have been a model, but she really was involved. I mean, and she was in draw. At twelve years old, she was selling drugs in yeah, my that, building and yeah, robbing. Yeah, in the me. building. Yeah, it was definitely a drug building, and it was uh, very serious. And you know, we were blessed because we knew all the neighborhood kids and all those people, so we were kind of protected in that way, or we could photograph them and be part of it and whatever. But yeah, very dangerous life Anna lived, and then eventually she got in with the whole Nietzsche thing. That became the mid '90s. I remember the cops went over there, grabbed her one time, and I went over there and took pictures and helped her out. And she her eventually dad got was deep. In jail. Yeah, he was in for murder. And so, uh, yeah, that was Ludlow. That's the block that we used to, uh, so this is the neighborhood we grew up in. I used to run every morning. Every morning, and I'd see Elsa out with the dogs. Right. I'd be up at like 6, 6.30, and there would be Elsa. And you'd have on your silver sneakers, your silver right. and running sneakers. Remember that? I do. I loved running and gardening. I garden in the morning. Yes. 16 Avenue B. I believe in community, and this is where our community together. Yes, that's right. And uh, actually, uh, you've been involved in a number of communities. You know, the garden yes. community, of course. You're what, 6, uh, six B, right? 6th Street and Avenue B. I got a bunch of garlic to get. We have a meeting today. Oh, and so Joni Freedom, she's from that garden? Joni Freedom and Sally Young. You gave her the Kathy Acker Award. Right. You gave me the Kathy Acker Actually, Award. Actually, you're, you're an actor uh, uh, The recipient. first year. I was yeah, so glad. that's when it was connected to Kathy Acker. Alan Kaufman fucked that whole thing up, and so he destroyed oh, it that it was part. people that work in, yeah, in the for Avenue decades, not, not just... And community. Community. And like MM is in there for a couple of reasons. You see, the actor is really building a community. I was talking to this to Marie, but Maurice today, and Maurice is our, our camera person and, and technician here. And filmmaker. And, and filmmaker, and he's been on the Lower East Side for a long time. So I'm happy that uh, we'll put this up when we get it onto the MM site, into the, the uh, right. filmmaker's co op well, site. I run the film co op, which yes. is the oldest archive collective. Uh, distributor uh, founded in 1961 by a group of 22 New York artists. July 14th, that's when we were incorporated. And Clayton's a member. And we have his uh, Tompkins Square Park riots that really. Police riots. Police riots. Yes, actually, and so, so we, it's, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a filmmaker's co op. Anne Hanneman uh, was also in Ludlow Street for a while with uh, the. Oh. Lost Shoe production. Right, I'm president. close friends with Anne. We're both close friends. Yeah, we're both close friends with Anne Hannah Van, the filmmaker. Yeah, she was a, she's on our board of directors. Yes, she was a president. She does our, right? Yeah, she does our music events. Phil Glass, with John Zorn and Phil Glass yes. and um, uh, Elliot Sharp. Uh, all these great Lower East, not well, uh, East Side avant-garde filmmakers, so it's a whole community that... See, part of one thing I was talking to Maurice about, because we're, you know, expanding this show, and Maurice was kind of leaning towards the people that are already famous, and I'm saying, I don't want to do the people that are already famous, because there's so many people who are famous in our world, but not the mainstream, who really need a tremendous amount of recognition. And Philip Glass, I mean, he's pretty standardized now in mainstream, not really, but not as much as Patti oh, Smith. he still does that. a lot of... 
He did a benefit for us. He always does benefits for you. Do you know we were doing this Indiegogo campaign and Ann yeah. called him and he came to the cop and he sat down as busy as he is with his yeah. offer at the Met. He sat down and talked about the first, the filmmaker's Cinematheque was the first play. Jonas asked him, you want to perform some music? And he was an underground composer and he's a um, uh, pianist and he said, yeah, I'd love to. And so he was telling these stories about community. So he was working with Eunice in those, with, uh, with uh, Jonas, Jonas in those right. days who went on and made film, uh, a film anthology archive. Yeah, Jonas founded the Filmmakers Club with Andy Warhol. All these Warhol wasn't well known. He was considered kind of uh, goofy uh, and gay. Warhol says, you know, homosexuality was illegal at the time. He said, I couldn't cover it up because I have such a sissy voice. And uh, but yeah, so it was. Then they became. I think after he died, he became famous. Um, more or less pretty famous in his own life. But uh, so y y Jonas actually started Filmmakers Co-op in the very beginning. Yes, he was the driving force. He actually m m wrote in, uh, the manifesto. We, want, we don't want Hollywood products. We want movies the color of blood. And what that meant, he wanted movies that were from the soul, that were vital and diverse, like right. Edward Owens, black, gay, he's dead, but his films were amazing in the 1968, it was just showed at Metrograph Theater, these four films. And he had Jose Rodrigo Soltero, uh, Lupe, which, and Dialogues with Che, Dialogues with Che was a Marxist film, and Double Screen Projection, we just, I just preserved it and got a grand for 40000 and it went to Chile and Argentina. Really? And were, yeah. This, and you put uh, that together? I put together the preservation grant to have it, but Jonas brought it into the collection. And uh, really, so what year was like that? Can be, what? What year was that? Well, it, my, it went in 2018, really? August, to travel. Really? And we're working with wow. people on the West Coast. There's a thing called LA Film Forum, also part of our community. Beautiful. And they have an ism, ism, ism. And this is Latin American films. Really? Cuba and all South America. Cuba! I love Cuba. Oh, have you, have you um, been there? I'd like to. I did a you story. Some people I went didn't capture the first movie they, they made was in uh, Cuba. They went to Cuba. high school students in New York. They went to Mexico, then be away with the flight to Cuba, and then they came back and they did a Cuban hip hop. Thank you. That's how I went. Yeah, I was went it? to the oh film school. If the you, if I was with I Elsa, I'd be all over you, my dear. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he's so funny. He's so funny. He, uh, I, you remember the film, a portrait I did of Anne Hannibal called Bitch Beauty? It's all about her struggle with addiction and how she became this amazing artist with a band called Transgender Jesus. Yeah. So I got invited to Cuba to show that film. And then I couldn't get the U.S. government to say, come on, you know, it's a film school, uh, an international film school, and I couldn't get permission, so I went through Cancun and flew to Cuba and showed this film. Well, aren't and, you daring? Uh, yes. Thank you very much. And they treated you well in Cuba? They treated me better than they do here. Well, they had, uh, it was at a film school. It's International Film School of the Arts. And it, uh, it, it, it Gacy, uh, you, uh, I think his name was uh, Jorge Ramos brought me. Okay. And, and Jorge Ramos teaches Latin American studies, but he likes film. And he came to the archives and he was looking at Lupe and helping me promote them. Then he invited me. He saw Bitch Beauty because he was interested in addiction and all these problems. I also turned you on to, uh, to Roger Kaufman. I turned you on to Roger Kaufman. Oh, that's right. Chop off. I got in Sundance with a. Yes, you said, here's someone you should meet. Yes, that's right. And you got into Sundance with that. And it was called Chop Yes, Chop Off was Roger. What was his name? Roger, Roger Kaufman. And he did. Body modification. He did. And uh, Love I, fingers and toes. 
And it was a photographer I like, Charles Gatewood. Charles Gatewood, another yeah. one I learned from here. That came out of here as well, Charles Gatewood, old friend, buddy, pal. Very interesting guy, and a filmmaker, and an ACCA recipient as what well. Year? Um, the first year, 2013. I love, it. you know, I yeah. collect his books. Because yeah, yeah. He, I showed so Charles clever. here many times. He, he would do like Mick Jagger to make money. But he also did circus performers. Oh, and circus um, performers, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. New Orleans, uh, all that stuff. Yeah, a lot of blood sports, a lot of tattoos, San a lot of Francisco. subversive stuff, a lot of S and M sex. Yeah, a lot of uh, sort of outside the the main rim, if you like. And they're <laughs> great portraits. And yeah, he's and actually really important. So and, and Char so Chop Off was in his. Had a portrait. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's nice. That's why he was there. Oh, that's why he was there. So, uh, this gets back to my point again. And with my conversation with Maurice, why I'm more interested, why the Acker Awards are really important to me, because they, they select people that are more outside, that have made major contributions, which ended up in the mainstream, but they might not be known in the mainstream. And Charles Gaywood, without question, has been a serious influence on body modification, photography, documentation, tattoo photography, tattoo books, all of that stuff. And circus, but he's not that well you know, now you have performance art. Yes. But Let when Gatlin was do doing it, they were circus yeah. performer. Well, that's right. performance art now. And also, there was also True, art performances. That was music. Right, and they weren't considered art performances at that time. They were right. happenings. They weren't considered they were more arts. happenings. And then happenings turned into and uh, performances. And Atlas Muse and Kimber yeah. Filer did the Womenizer show for Jeffrey Yeah, Bench. and, and, and Annie Sprinkle and all that. Awesome. And that came after Gatewood. And Gatewood hung out with Annie right from the beginning. And that's another thing with Annie Sprinkle is. Annie Sprinkle is a great photographer. And she never really took her photography seriously. She took it very seriously, but she never took it as part of herself seriously. She was more into sex. Well, no, but she her not photography is sex really important. positive. Yeah, like sex it, positive. It was always men driven, but Annie wanted to make it like it was fun. And she yes. dressed up like the little Bo Peak. Yeah, and all kinds transgender. of transgender. Annie's one of the first to tell me about transgendered artists. But and you see, here's the whole thing about MC, about this politically correct. I don't buy most of this shit nowadays, the feminism, so much of this PC stuff, whatever and whatever. The thing is, if you go back to that tranny thing, for example, let's mention that. And Annie, and you're right, Annie was one of the first people with less to bring out and do a video on like a transsexual. This is, we're talking Annie. into the 90s. And people now with this, because it's tra this trans, these operations are so common now, that it's now like a whole plateau that people are on. This is all fresh territory. It wasn't like that before. It wasn't talked about like that before. Well, and people it, like Annie true. were really the leaders in this stuff. And they're in, she's known for it. But my point that I'm but getting she, back to is she she's also... She incredible videos. And photographs. She and she's a great and photographer. Photograph. And that's my point. A lot of people haven't heard of Charles, but they should, because Charles is really the leading figure in all of that stuff, and people don't know who he is. And I had, like, for a book, like, into a um, Street Gangs of the Lower East Side, which included Gatewood, and Gatewood goes back to Annie Sprinkle and all the stuff that Blue Stockings Bookstore talks about, including the politics. But they wouldn't take my book, Street Gangs of the Lower East Side, because they said it was too violent and the rest of it. But really, for a historical book in Lower East Side, it included that whole sort of loop around, which included Gatewood and all these people. But they don't well, get the I history would, because they're so politically correct. Well, I don't want, you know what... Uh, so let's I, switch topics. No, I want to bring up a book you did that I felt was important in my life as an artist. Okay. And it was Captured. You called me and you said, I'm putting this book together on the Lower East Side filmmakers and I want you to write something. I said, well, I don't write, Clayton. And you said, well, it's time to take yourself seriously as an artist. So I, now I write. Now I have something published and I'm giving a talk at the Louvre December 1st. Yes. At, in Paris. In Paris. Talking about my films, but also yes. women filmmakers that was there. Uh, Marie see, here, 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 wait, here. wait, let me Go finish. Tell us, let the me finish. Tell us the names. Aunt Marie Macon, who was the first, one of the first, influenced Jonas Mikas and all these people because she, in 1956, 
and 658. She was using a handheld camera, and she called it uh, the swing and sway. And what was Dancing. her name? And Marie Megan. Marie Megan. And, and where was she? her. She lit, was Lithuanian and in New York City, and also a member of the film co-op, Storm de Hirsch, painting and scratching uh, on film, and also... Before Harry it. Smith? Uh, and, well, ha, uh, Storm and, and Louis Berganti were members of the co-op, so they probably knew Harry, but um, because they were all into this kind of... Harry was into mind-expanding drugs, so I don't... Uh, I don't know if they knew each other, but they were part of the same community. Right, okay. And, he, and Storm painted on film. She did this trilogy called uh, Ritual of Thought, um, Thought and Ritual of Love. And her three films still have hand-painted, and we still have them, and I'm showing them at the Louvre if you're in really? Paris, with her original artist touch. And wow. someone said to me, oh, your films are all scratched up. I go, they're not scratched up. What it is, it's the hand of the artist. Because yeah. now everyone's so used to having this clinical look in because cinematography. Yeah, of course. Because they want digital. They want it like HD. But uh, then I'm talking about Carol Lee. Do you know Carol Lee Shanaman? I know. Bob Wiegand, a person who I knew, got me into artist talk and art, and I did quite a number of projects with him. And he was also early video, Bob Wiegand, and he was very close to Carol Lee Shanaman. And he, I me think, too. documented a number of her performances. And I think if you, it would be interesting to look at the filmmakers' co-op and see if Bob Wiegand is in there for video. And Carol I'm going to look, because yeah, Carol Lee is one of the first women artists to give us video. But I'm showing a film called Me Joy that was shot on Super 8, 1963, for the Festival of Free Expression, where they're covering the body and painting the body and rolling around men and women yeah. and with, ch with raw chickens and fish. It, it's so fat, you know. And this is 60s. It's 60s, and there were this exuberance. And then I'm talking about the film, my films. Okay, so like you're the Mary third Man woman, and, and who's fourth. the fourth woman? Uh, it's Marie Mankin, Storm de Hirsch is a woman, Carol Lee Schneeman, and Mary Magdalene Sarah. And then I'm talking about my film, like Mary Magdalene, I shot at the Ludlow House, because at the time it was just this role. Remember, you, Clayton is another thing Clayton did. He told me to join the Ludlow House, and I went over there, and they let me film in this role. What happened was they were trying to break into this part of the neighborhood and they wanted to join up with somebody from the neighborhood who had a certain amount of authenticity and that was me. And I wasn't really interested in joining but the, one of the things I said that I would do is I would help them if they're really interested because it's a very expensive private club that if you involve some neighborhood people that uh, make them members then uh, I'll go along with your program. And eventually I did. Eventually I even became a member myself. But one of the people I was able to get in there and they love, by the way, they absolutely love, they keep telling me this, is M.M. Sarah. I love it. I have a yeah. show there. I got Perry the over there playing the piano. She played for the piano for a while and got paid well. And, and so, the, you so know. So they even let me film for hours through this rock around. Yeah. And it's dirt on the floor. Oh, here's Elsa. Come on in, Elsa. Elsa. Hi, Elsa. So, uh, come in and sit down. So uh, what happens is, is that um, that's right. And so you get your membership, and they love you over there. And, that's and I, get to, I get to make the film. I get to show it in the loop. And at first, remember, I told you no, I didn't want to go. Yeah. Uh, at first, when you told me about the Ludlow House, you said it's an art club and it's a club for artists. And I said, but I I don't have time for clubs. You know, I'm teaching at the new school. Um, uh, working in my garden, I'm running the film co-op, and he goes, they're good people, you're going to like it. You, know, you can show films there. And when I went over and... Uh, met Rachel? I met Rachel Smith and Pierre. Yeah. And they, I said, they said, what do you like? I said, film, 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 photography. And they, I said, could I film in here? And they said, yes. And I have a filmmaker that I love that you loved, Taylor Mead lived yes. in the neighborhood. Also, another actor recipient, by the way. 
Was he alive? Yes. No, I think he was dead when he got it. Well, well I'll think about that, because this was 2013. I, I'll check that. But he definitely is part of it. I know that for sure. Yeah, he should be a part and of I it. And I think also he so was in, in a couple of places. So I wanted him to come down. I was going to take him down uh, to the Ludlow House. And Bradley Arrows and Joel Schlemowitz, we were setting up projectors and Bradley showing Bradley Arrows, another ACRA recipient. That's right. Yeah. He certainly deserves it. He and does. we were showing films, but Taylor Mead had a stroke that night and died. And they brought in candles. Was that the night he died? That's right. That's a candle. And that's a remember right. playing right. and yes, we put yes, out yes. candles. Right, and the sand and the rest of it, yes. In the sand. But in the end, it turned out to be a very good thing for you because they love you over there. It was a very good thing. And, and have a nice I, theater. I did. Uh, then the Warhol Foundation, they they did Taylor Mead and Andy Warhol. So they came, flew in from Pittsburgh, Gerald and Huxley, not the foundation, but the museum, and showed uh, early Taylor Mead films. See, one of the things, she's not mentioning mentioning feminism or something like that, the thing I like about M.M., like she's taking, for example, without a lot of fanfare, four women to Paris. Four women that were really instrumental in the history of video. Right. And, and there are four women, except for Caroline, for the most part, who tend to be off the main radar. Well, and that's a problem for me with feminism and that is it's like the art world or like the graffiti world. There was only ten people in it. And there's not ten people in it. There's lots of people. And I think one thing you do at this filmmaker's call which is very important because you do have a, a, a female point of view, let's put it that way. I do. And I'm you a save a lot of uh, like Elsa. you save a lot of women's work that really deserves to be saved. I save and Edward a lot of Owen. fanfare, of course. You saved a lot. Well, I, that's why I was thrilled when I found out I got the Kathy Eck Award the same year as Howard Gottenplan, who ran Millennium for 40 years. That's right. And Howard said to me, no one's ever given me anything. Except and for me. I, that's right. And they give him grief, but they didn't give him... That's one of the saddest stories I know of Lower East Side. I won't get into it right now, but what happened to Howard at the end? Howard kept that place alive for all those Howard years. Howard wrote all the grants. Yes, he wrote all the, the He kept the place clean. He kept the programming going. He kept the place in operation. And he he always I had was, the wine for openings. Everything always worked. And he the, always gave the filmmakers call for benefit. Every year he yes. would say, do you want to show films in December? We'll have a party. You can That's show why them. the actors are really important, because they do save these people who are peripheral. They did a lot. And someday, because in the end, because Howard wasn't really like, we all have different things that we can do and do well, but we don't have everything we do and can do well. So there's lots of things we can't do. There's a time limitation. And there's a time it. limitation. And the reality is, like with me, that's what it said like with Alice, because Alice was half the act, so half what I couldn't do, she could do it, whatever. She's a fa fabulous. But with Howard, he kept so much of that millennium alive, so much but he didn't get in on buying the building, so he lost the space. And La Mama owns almost the whole damn block, and they go from really 3rd Street to 4th Street, and they couldn't cut Howard out a piece of the pie, and they all ended up, the millennium, turning on Howard and hating him in the end, and I think that's why he died. He got really sick after that, really quickly, and he just... He got cancer. He got cancer, and Well, he you know what died. happened? He, he, they gave, they, they were in this funky old government building. Yeah. And was, they, you had to bring it up the standard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The government would, goes in and they go, oh, the city goes in. Yeah, oh, yeah, you need yeah. these $100,000 sprinklers. Yeah, you got to yeah, fix yeah. this leak. Right. It's like, uh, and where's Howard going to get the money? He and so they the all picked on Howard. They, but, but Howard kept it going. He kept Not the, everybody. Lily White, I of supported. Of course. And you supported. I did. I did. And you I, did I, not the scream at Howard. Did. No, I loved Howard. And uh, that's why Howard's an actor recipient, because I could see all the good that he did, and he did a that lot. That first year, he also recognized one of my favorite uh, publishers and distributors was Barney Rossick. Barney Rossick. He never got the recognition he deserved. Except Grove he got an actor Ever recipient. That's right. And <coughs> Fred Green Jordan. Review. Evergreen Review. Evergreen Review. Uh, Jim Feast, Love he got an ACRA yes. reward, and he was an editor on, on Evergreen. <laughs> you see, these things are important. And like, ACRAs are a collection, my shows are a collection, Howard also, and, and Kurt Hopi did that show of the portraits, and that's a collection. Did he photograph you? 
Um, uh, sure. Probably not. Oh, but. yeah, I should probably grab you. We'll, um, oh, okay. we'll make that well, happen. But, uh, and my Clayton Patterson hat. Of course. What do you think of? But Howard also had that wall of avant garde filmmakers. You remember what the wall? What happened to that what wall? Have, you must have been on that. You were on that. I was on that. I Maybe. was on that too. All these people. Everybody. Everybody. everybody Kendra, Jack that. Waters, Peter Kramer, Kuchar Brothers. Oh, Vivian Dick. Yeah, Jack Smith. Yeah, you know. Yeah, that's, that's a great collection of photographs of, of and the And Howard, avant-garde. the thing. With Howard's, with Millennium, you could make a proposal. Like the new museum said, oh, uh, I do you want to do a show and for our new festival of ideas or something? So I said, New York Landscapes. <coughs> so I, I said at that time, and now Charles Cohn's our benefactor, and we have a space and a theater. But so I said to Howard, could I have a couple of days and do show films, New York Landscapes? Like Rudy Burkhart, who is another filmmaker I like, right. photographer. And uh, yeah, Burkhart, right away, Howard got in plan and said yes. And you just, and he projected him, it himself. He projected it. Himself. Yeah, and they made it happen. You see, that was the thing. Once Now they go, oh, you got to write a proposal. Yeah, uh, now Where's the money? Gonna... And we're not going to get any money. No, and the other thing is, and it's like the anthology be... now. Forget about it. You know, I well, tried Jonas to get... was Jonas, Jonas was the guy. Jones I tried to get Angel bought. Orange Sands a show over there. A now, what? A show. Now, oh. Al would buy all the tickets. He would do it in the small theater. So if the small theater hold, holds 60 people... I think it holds 75. Isn't okay, it so he would pre-buy 75 tickets. No problem. So tickets weren't a problem. Because he wanted to sing for his brother. Now, he's done... Al has done all kinds of events at... Uh, Angel Orange. Angel Orange Sands Foundation when Al was alive. And uh, so what happened, he was an incredible person, another actor recipient, uh, by the way. And so what happens is, is that um, everybody, including filmmakers, co-opted benefits over there. And people from anthology went over there and drank for free and ate for free and were always in guest house for free. And they wouldn't give his brother a screening. So one day, Jonas comes into... uh, Lucien's, and I say to Lucien, hey, we want a show for Angel. He said, call me up. Done. And so I got I got Angel his show. It was but like... That, well, you had to... The thing but I had, but, and, and it didn't change anything in the filmmakers' the co-op. But they got the money, they got a full house, they had the whole event. But they played so damn difficult. Jonas was into making things happen. These other people are into stopping things from happening. Well, they're more bureaucratic. <laughs> Jonas yeah. wasn't bureaucratic. No, Jonas we're losing said all to that. me, "Why don't we do a monthly show?" When I was first yeah. to do. And everybody that's new to the co-op that hasn't uh, shown their work, right. they can have a show. And you showed lots at Millennium. I showed lots at Millennium. So let me go back here for a second. Now, Jonas listen. retired. Because he turned 90. Yeah, he once he retired, then you went to... Okay. Yeah. So, uh, who's this Storm that you're talking about? Storm to Hirsch, actually, no one knows about her. It's not Stormy, right? No, it's S-T-O-R-M. I'll give you some uh, a, a DVD of her work. Okay, you know who Stormy was, right? No. The it, one that uh, look, uh, uh, cross-dresses a man? Stormy no, this, was part of the uh, Storm Stormy to Hirsch was Stonewall. into... Uh, she was a poet, and her fur in 1956, uh, she had an album published of her poetry, and she was a well-known poet. I finally, after 50 years, was able to republish all her poetry, mythology. You got it republished. I did working with a man, Canada, Canada, oh a man God. from Canada, uh, Stephen Bloomer, B L O O M E R. A filmmaker, 34 years old, Sightline, Sightline Press. Wow. And, but it took, you. what you have, sometimes I find that I have to How reach out. How can you work for me? I, I do work for you. I'm yeah. with you. I'm with you That's right, right now. You're with me right We're now. working That's together. Right. Working together, yes. And with Elsa. And, and with Elsa and Maurice. And Maurice. I like that name, Maurice. Yeah, Maurice is good. So, uh... Yeah, actually, so you've done a lot, and that's the filmmaker's co-op, and then the running, of course, and you teach. What all do you teach? Oh, so teaching is another story, speaking of PC. Uh, I te- I've been teaching at the New School for Social Research. 
They dropped the social research oh, because they? they're political. They're, well, now it's a school of public engagement. Oh. And I know, please, they're afraid of, I don't know what. But uh, I've been teaching there 22 years. And the first class I taught was sexual representation with a name like Mary Magdalene. Uh, I taught with Michelle Handelman. And it was all about gender and sexuality in the films, like Porn Sheep from 1970, I'm Curious Yellow, Deep Throat, all these films that were mainstream, that crossed over and made billions of dollars uh, behind the Green Door, the, Mer um, the Mitchell Brothers in San Francisco. And that was great, but then uh, uh, I taught horror films. And then I teach the history of avant-garde cinema. And now, with censorship, they now they're afraid of offending someone with the sexuality. So now I, I'm teaching, I, I, for three semesters, I teach filmmaking, cameraless filmmaking. You know, you paint, it's, uh, it's more about painting on film, found footage film, cutting film together. You would know about this. But, I, th I also want to teach the theory, so now I'm going to go back to the history of avant-garde cinema. But Jack Smith's Flaming Creature that I helped take out of the... I didn't take that film, but I took cleaned out his apartment, just like you helped clean out Taylor Mead. Um, and, uh, well, that's an interesting story. About, yeah, uh, tell now tell me about the cleaning out Jack Smith's apartment. Tell me that story. Oh, this story. Well, I never told anyone, but oh, I was I at New York University because I was trying to get a, I didn't intend to, but it happened. I needed uh, to, I wanted to take these classes on curating. And this was 1990. So I um, applied and I got to take a study with Bill Simon in the, at the British Film Institute. I went abroad to study at the British Film Institute. It was a life change. I almost starved to death because I didn't have any money, but. Uh, you don't need to eat that much anyway, but uh, the, it, it was great because I got to see a lot of amazing films and the London co-op. But when I was at New York University, there's a brilliant scholar named Jim Hoberman. Do you know Jim Hoberman? No, I don't, but I know who he is. You should, he's a, pa he, oh, I would, I shouldn't say that, should I? I would recommend him for Kathy Acker because he's the one that did this brilliant writing on Jack Smith and made people understand his performance and stuff. And so he, he told, yeah, he, he I'd like to talk to him about that. Yeah, you should definitely. You know, I got Jack Smith into his last film and nobody ever mentions it. It was called Shadows in the City. Wow. And so well, let me death. finish my, Go ahead. my Jack. So I was studying with Hoberman and Hoberman said, I need someone to go into Jack's apartment. He has just passed away. And take the film out because um, he died without a will. When you die without a will, it can be confiscated. Yeah. And it belongs to the family, and the family were... Yeah, they were, he was gay, and they, they weren't were, into it. His sister didn't like him. Yeah, 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 right. So I went in there and with... Um, Penny Arcade. Penny Arcade, thank you. See, memory left. Mm -hmm. I went in there with Penny Arcade, and we... And I found in the bottom of his closet, clothing, were these camera rolls and all his films. We took him out and we took, I called Jonas, we took him to Anthology. And I took all his albums out, vinyl, because his collection of albums were, vinyl records were amazing. And uh, then we took the murals he had on canvas, took the, rolled it up and what we did is we took all the artistic stuff out of his apartment. Uh, his drawings <coughs> and paintings. And what about slides? Did you find a lot of slides? Thousands of slides. Whatever happened with all that stuff? Okay, so when they went to Anthology, uh, the president, Jim Hoberman set up the Plaster Foundation with Jerry Tartaglia. And Jerry did the preservation, but they have very, you know, they wrote grants and I district uh, when Flaming Creatures was done, uh, I bought the filmmakers <coughs> all bought three prints so that it could be in distribution to raise money, and uh, then people wanted to buy prints. 
So what happened now in the 21st century is the Whitney arranged for the Barbara Gladstone Gallery to have the estate. They paid a million dollars for it, right? Yeah. So Do you know yeah. Barbara Gladstone? No, but I know, I know that story. Yeah. Uh, but the other thing is, she is that... She preserved all these incredible slides. And they, uh, yeah, he had a lot of slides, so she ended up with all the slides, right? Everything. She ended I up wrote to her everything. one time and told about the last film that he was in, and she never responded. So, you know, that's kind of how that goes. And well, that, you need... I know the film person. So okay, maybe I can tell. Yeah, I, and what I do is I call should, them on the phone. They should know this. I know. So they probably get but, one million uh, uh, emails. And yeah, I yeah, no, that's probably true. Call. It's more blah, 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 whatever. You know, like you but see, the thing with, J with, with Jack is that he would change his film every time he showed it. So it means at a certain point, somebody makes the aesthetic decision that this is Flaming Creatures. Well, here's the, the one thing I'm going to say about Flaming Creatures that is kind of what makes it controversial still, is that Jack played vinyl, and I read somewhere where Tony Conrad did the final track after Jack was dead, and he put these screaming voices in when the, in the orgasm scene, and I, Jack didn't want those screaming voices. He played tangos and music, and if you hear the screaming voices, it becomes more narrative. Right, right, more right, 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 right. And then people say, oh, there's a rape going on, it's not an orgy. You, there's so Jack this wanted it to be dis disjointed. Jack he wanted didn't the different want different senses to be taking place at a time when they wouldn't normally be taking. That's right. And he didn't want to make it so literal. Like, yeah. this is a like fantasy. Orgasm, people screaming. Maybe, right. maybe somebody's singing somewhere over the rainbow, somebody's having an orgasm, another one's in a shower. Yeah, or the, the catacombs. I mean, the dead coffins. Yes, but <coughs> without the narrative the story, because once right. you once you put the screen in, so uh, of course you can. Here's a bottle that's never been opened. You can even have it. Oh, thank you. Just a sec. Thank oh, you. Okay, it's, it makes it yours. <laughs> See, you spit the water back, so that's yours now. <laughs> Just kidding. No, now yeah, it's got my mark, mark, the bathroom. There you go. But uh, no, the other thing with Jack is, it was interesting when we were making, Jack was always paranoid that Jonas was taking films and overnight copying them and selling them to other people. And that was always one of um, Jack's complaints against Jonas. So he used to go over to the building and piss on it once a day. I heard that too. And he also I, had I, Uncle, I, Uncle heard, I mean, Pisco. I swear um, I'd go by and you know the concrete on the yeah, outside, that stained. smell pissed. Yeah, yeah, that would be Jack. And so he claims he did that every day. And he used to call himself the Pink Pirate. He came over here one time, it was interesting, because he was drinking this uh, Guinness beer. And he said it would help him grow hair. So he was drinking a Guinness a day and pissing on the film anthology once a day. But uh, when we were making Shadows in the City, the uh, Is film... Is that your film? Uh, that was Ari Rusmas. So I was the art director. Mm. And because of music that's in it, he's too paranoid to play it for getting sued and whatever, because it's got like Mr. Sam and -da 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 -da. and it's beautiful in the movie. I think it's an incredible movie. We'll get it's some a, other musician to sing it. Yeah, I'd like to play it. But you know, it's already, you know, I'm just the art director. But yeah, I, I have a coffee, so I'd like to show it sometime. We should do it. We, we should, should do, do it. like a soiree. I need screen. to do a benefit for the actors. But let me finish this one story before we get to the benefit. And that is, so when we were getting the film done uptown, you know, the, there was a couple of Jewish guys, old Orthodox guys, were like developing and copying the film. I forget what lab it was, because porno used to be like a Italians. One. Was it Jews. A one lab? I'm not sure. At this because point. that's where Carol Lee got fused. So what happened is a graphic film book. What happened is, is he talked crazy. about copying flaming creatures overnight for Jonas. Because Jonas sold the copy to somebody in Connecticut. So this is probably going all the way back to the 60s. Well, I'd like now, to Jonas see that would be copy saying, because who knows? Because that's exactly right. And Jonas would be saying he had to do it to preserve the film. He would say that he was doing it with the best of intentions. And he would also say they had to make money or whatever. But Jack's complaint would be that I didn't get any. And I'm sure he didn't. And I'm sure he assumed that they were making copies and was told that they weren't. So that caused that... That Great. story, you, yeah, I don't know about... Uh, well, I heard well, that part from Jack. That, uh, well, I heard that I, part from I the movie people. Story the movie Joni, people. I have a Jack Jonas Mikas story. When 
the PS1 was the first to take all of Jack's apartment, the wall. He wrote all over in his Queens. walls. Yes. No, the one, the first and first was. Oh, did they have the uh, they, they, the first and first. The PS1 what out in Long Island, yeah. where Jack originally lived. No, 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 I know where he lived because I was in there. I photographed that apartment. Yeah, but that's the show the was in Long Island City, PS1. Right. Yeah. Okay. PS1 Long Island City. Yes. What did I say? Uh, you said first and first, but no, no it's a part that of it was first, first and first. And for, I'm so, trying to say it, they took the walls out, out of, of Jack apartment. Smith's yes. apartment because Jack Smith w wrote all over his walls. Yeah, Uncle Fish and, Hook, which yeah, was uh, that's, Jonas When I was with Jonas looking at it, Jonas pointed it out. He goes, yeah. Look, here's Jack talking about me. He that's says, right. He calls me Uncle Fish Hook yeah. because I'm an art. I'm, I'm making an archive. Well, the amazing thing is he is making an archive. Well, look, so let's, let's go back to a question that's very important. Because but he wasn't about angry Europe. about it. I don't know about <laughs> Europe, but in, in America, for sure, you could really say avant-garde film exists here because would you really say Jonas Mikas, uh, um, M. M. Sarah, and, and M. M. Sarah with Filmmakers Co-op, and Howard Goodblatt? I, uh, Would that be fair? I mean, uh, you, you, well, you, you say, know, wait, wait. I'm going to say something. Like, yeah. I would say Storm to Hirsch. You don't know who she is. You will know right. at some day because I'm promoting her. I'm trying right. to get the book out there. But that's what I'm but saying. Without these you organizations, sure? you would have never had. Without Jonas being the organizer and putting together all those film festivals, all those screenings, all those shows I for would, years. You know what I would say is his, his most powerful thing yeah. is his movie journal. His writing, he wrote so passionately. Have you read movie, Jonas's movie journal? I read the his first biography, thing. Life Story. Oh, the movie's journals with his review of it. Like Flaming Creature, sometimes I, I quote him. I have a Jonas. Can I tell you a Jonas story? Yeah, of course. I preserved a Jonas. There's a film called Johnny Minotaur. Charles Henry Ford did poem posters. It... Charles Henry Ford did silk screenings. At, uh, wait, Charles Henry that. Ford was a, a collage. He made collages. He was a surrealist. Yeah. He so, lived in the so, Dakota. Wait, wait. Uh, he made silk screens. Yeah. Maybe before Andy Warhol because he used the Ford ad logo um, emblem and as his own. And he made View magazine, right? And View, V yeah. U magazine, and so Mama that's Charles Preser Henry Ford. At Mama, I was Mama. Preserved both films, uh, poem posters and Johnny Minotaur. And then I couldn't get Johnny Minotaur shown because uh, they they looked at it and said, "Oh, you know, there's too many penises." Well, there there's penises. What they you know? It's a great film. It's filmed in Crete, and it's about modernity. Pe Pedro Picasso's logo is the minotaur with the penis. You can't castrate the minotaur. Anyway, in for his logo. It's a phallic what symbol. You, you, it's can't, about, you can't castrate. Uh, what do you mean? I mean that the film is about modernity and it's about the minotaur. And so the, it has penises in it because it has minotaur. They made a paper mache head of a minotaur and they have men acting as the minotaur. So when I called Jonas, I couldn't get, I was going to Denver and they were saying, people were saying it's porn. He goes, porn, it's poetry. Uh, he said, it's porn is in the eyes of the person who thinks it's porn. For me, it was poetry. And I have an interview with him and I'll give you that interview and you can quote me and then I'll help people, um, you know, help back you up. And so he sent me 12 pages at the Denver Film Society, and I read it to the audience, what he said, because sometimes people label things in terms of content without understanding that it's more than just that. It's about, it has Salvador Dali talking about, it has his niece in it, it's filmed in the island of Cree, and it's the idea, uh, it has soldiers dancing, they dance with each other in Crete. So it, it's a really beautiful film and Jonas uh, brought it into the collection. And now it's like, well now, I, so I wanted to show it an anthology. And I, I had a hard time getting it shown there. 
with Jonas was there. Well, he he showed that film in 1971 or two in anthology. Then he brought it to the film co-op for distribution. So uh, sometimes people are fearful. But they they see, got put up a big trigger warning. Watch out! There's but you see, the reason I said Jonas for like one of the the avant-garde film people is because now he writes about it, he screens, he puts together shows, and he, he distributes. He and sets up societies. I mean, Howard set up an organization. I mean, Howard, I think it was Ken, what was it, Ken? Um, um, the but let me tell you about Storm to her. She did the same thing. Storm published poetry. Storm got, uh, started the Griffin Group. The Griffin Group was a distributor before the co-op of Willard Moss, Storm de Hirsch. So, uh, uh, Louis, well, Storm de Hirsch, Louis Berganti, and they uh, uh, were together promoting experimental cin cinema. But unless, the thing with Jonas, he self-published, and he was connected to the Village Voice. If you want to say That's something, right. if you want something visible, all right, you, Storm de Hirsch did produce her own poetry album. But, and, to, and then they're in the collection at the New York University. But how do you get them across to the general public? Right. Jonas was smart, was... Yeah, a, good at that. He was very good at that. Yeah. And I tell you, my brother was in a monastery called St. Vincent's Monastery. And way out in, in a place called Latrobe, Pennsylvania. Do you have a brother? Yeah, I have an older brother. I didn't know that. And uh, he, he knew his, Jonas Mikas. He heard Jonas with his 16 millimeter projector come to the monastery of boys and show films in 1959 or 60. Really? Really. And my, I said to my brother, well, do you remember the title of any film? What do you remember about avant-garde film? And he said, I don't remember avant-garde film. I remember Mikas had such a charisma, a dynamic personality. Oh. So let me ask That's you a question. So your brother was in avant-garde film in the 50s? My brother was in a monastery where they brought Jonas Mikas out to talk. Was Jonas that the first was time you ever heard of avant-garde film? I didn't know. I read... You must uh, be young then. I, no, that's not... I did not know anything about it. That's what I'm saying. You must have been a kid. I was a kid, but my brother... Isn't that incredible that your brother overlapped with it, Jonas it, Mikas? Met Jonas Mikas in, in Pennsylvania? at a monastery, and he brought it home and a talked about it to M.M. M. Sarah. Oh my God, that's almost mystical. I know, and I told Jonas, I said, he said, I didn't know you had a brother. I said, my brother is, not only that, for my brother, for Christmas a couple of years ago, I brought him Jonas' book. Um, She's still in the monastery? How, oh, hell no, thank God. I shouldn't say that, but no. He got married, he has daughters, he... Um, he, my brother, uh, traveled. He drove around the country. He was into the arts and writing and literature. He was too. He wasn't. He was Christian. No, he wasn't. He was the, too dynamic, and he loved women too much to be a monk. He went there for an education. Like, can you believe? that I studied in a private Catholic girls' finishing school in high school. Not because I wanted to be a nun. We were, my father and grandfather worked in coal mines in south, uh, southwestern Pennsylvania, Cannonsburg. And so when you're a minor, you don't have, do they have great schools? No, they had the worst schools. And my father, uh, was it working in a coal mine when he was 12 years old. He when so he your was father, t Tony Serra, was, uh, was a union organizer. He was 12 years old working in a coal mine. He, he was so smart. He went half a day to the school and half a day in the mines, and they paid the kids by height. So when he got older, he became a union organizer to help. But my dad um, uh, would say that, you know, he was, he met Jonas Mikas. I wanted my dad to meet Jonas because actually I, the whole scene, avant-garde film. Uh, so the Flowers of St. Francis, Rossellini. So I said, 
I called John and John said, it's all sold out, the theater's no chairs. I said, well, I'm sure, I'll bring my dad anyhow and he can meet Jonas. So I said, Jonas, this is my dad, Tony Sarah. So this was at uh, the film anthology? Yeah, anthology film In a small archive. theater? No, the huge theater. Oh, else. really? No seats? And Jonas said, Tony, I'll get you a chair. And he carried up three flights of stairs, a folding ch a chair for my dad, and he put it outside the, the and, he's, and he gave my dad the translation. And that's the kind of person that Jonas was that yeah. made me love him. And he gave my dad the translation of The Flowers of St. Francis. Really? And I put it to you and your father. And where is that? I want to see it. I'd like to see it myself. That was outside. Uh, we have to get an archivist for Clayton to yes, go we through do. and later. Start putting this stuff in together. That's while right. we're still alive, a, we while we're still alive, I have a wealth of material. And that's so what's important Jonas, about the what accuracy made for the him show. interesting, I would say a pivotal fit is his charisma, his passion, Dedication, and his, human, his ambition. Uh, humanism. Yeah, he yeah, had a way passion. of connecting with people. And he yes, could connect he with rich people and poor people. He was a good facilitator between the artist and the wealth. Very few artists can do that. Very few institutions can go back and forth between the wealth. I mean, he had people that were in, in, unusually cheap or known to be extremely cheap but helpful on the board, like Yoko Ono, very wealthy but known. Just, you know, he had Andy Warhol. He had the whole spectrum of people. He had Ken Jacobs. He you know what we have at the film co-op? And Jonas help, is, helped us is Charles S. Cohen. Do you know who Charles Cohen is? No. Charles Collins saved the quad. He saved the Rohauer collection before us. He gave the co-op when we were evicted out of the downtown space by Lana Heist, by, you know. Um, he gave us, uh, in, in 2008, an, a place and an archive and a theater. And he say, just now purchased, two years ago, Landmark Theaters, because Charles S. Cohen believe, you should give him a Kathy Acker award, believes that films should be seen in a community right. rather than on your little laptop that you get. Right, that's right. You go that's into right. a theater. That, that's, that's part right. of an experience of, of theater. That is. It's the magic. not the isolation, but, but the community. The community, even though it's abstract and dark. No, it's but you feeling. go into, you dream yes. in the dark. That's it's right. A, and, and you understand that you're together in this pool, but you just don't see each other. But you do feel it. Like people no, but do you have, have a Q&A. When, when I'm showing, this is what I always try to get. Mm -hmm. When I invite a filmmaker, the, I have them introduce the work and talk about their work. Mm -hmm. Just like you and I are talking. Right. And then mm -hmm. afterwards a QA and a to help the audience understand. They can ask questions if they don't know. Now what's your feeling about Howl? Howl, uh, the poem. I love the poem, Howl. Allen Ginsberg. Allen Ginsberg, what an amazing... And what about the organization, How Howl Happening? I, I liked how the avant-garde, well, it lasted. Capture came out of Howl, and I loved Capture, and I loved the book. I have it in my office with, remember you had a party? We should yeah. do part two. We should definitely do part two. I need yes, to do a you know, I have more people. Can you help me with that? What? I need to do a benefit for the actors. I need to... Because I need to build up the, uh, the the written booklet, the bio booklet, which is very important. I like to pay an artist a little bit of money for do the boxes because the boxes is a lot of work and I have to buy the boxes. Well, can we have a uh, can we have it here, Clay? Sure, You've of got course. a nice space. Of course, of course, we could. We could talk to Ann Hanneman and maybe uh, yeah, a few get some other people. people. Ann was talking about going corporate. And I don't really want to go corporate. You know, I really want to kind of keep away from. Do you have a nonprofit? No, I don't. But I I well, could have a problem with one. He, under under the film call. We could do that. Whatever you want to do, but I just uh, you know got to you know we could raise about seven or ten thousand dollars would be great, because then I mean we have the venue which is theater for New City which is great. The boxes. I love the theater for the New City. The, to to do the bio booklet. Probably that was a great experience. It then. is. It is. To do the the last box. One, the new box. Yeah. Yeah, and and the box would become very important. And now what happened is Sarah Driver, you know her, the filmmaker? Yes, she did the Basquiat film. She's yes. a great filmmaker. Yeah, she's a great filmmaker. And so so she suggested uh, um, her husband, Jim Jarmusch, Jarmusch, 
She suggested doing the time capsule in Tompkins Square Park, and then uh, Bridget, uh, David Hershowitz's wife, she hooked it up so we can do the time capsule. So it's really brilliant that we're going to be able to do the actor time capsule in Tompkins Square Park. So that's become a real be legitimate big. thing. And you see, at a certain point, what I want to be able to do, and that's why the booklets are so important, so have, when, uh, is to build this community. Because eventually with this community, you should be able to overlap it with different archives. Like you should be able to take a picture of the tree of all the ACRA recipients, put that over to Filmmakers Co-op and start drawing lines between the people that are connected. And you'd be surprised Millennium. how many are. Millennium, Jack uh, Waters, Jonas Peter Kramer, Jim M. Sarah, Ann Ann, but who? Jonas. Uh, Jonas wasn't interested in one. He's the only person who turned it down. He said, I don't take awards. I said, yeah, you right know, I gave him an award. I didn't tell him I was going to give him an award. I showed the break at the Soho House. He loved the Soho House, by the way. Oh, I bet because, he did. That's oh, his yes, environment. Yes, you yes, yes, come yes. Drank a bottle of red wine, yeah, you know, of the best red wine, and like, and they, you know, and ate and ate and ate and steak and this. And, he and loved that good living. The one thing yes, about Jonas, he, he, he could pull that up comfortably, yeah. and they would be happy doing it for him. See, that's why he could go over to Lucy. But I gave him an award, and do you know who designed it? Who, an artist, I love his work, Tom Otternick. Of course. You gave him a Kathy Ecker. Tom Otternick and, and his wife, uh, also part of uh, the Filmmakers Co-op. Uh, Colleen Fitzgibbon. Colleen Fitzgibbon. Yes. You see, there's always And overlaps. Tom Otternick designed this award for a Lifetime Achievement for Jonas. Yes. And I surprised him, and he looked, and he, he wasn't, he goes, Lifetime, it's not over yet. Uh, but I said, well, you don't have to be dead. Who you see, that's what I wanted to give it to him for. That's right. I wanted to give him lifetime achievement. And he, he said, look, I can't take a lifetime achievement because if I did, it would mean I'm dead and I don't want to be dead. That's the same thing he said to me. That's I said, that's Jonas, I what do you want? It? When you're dead, you yeah. don't, you're, that's not an acknowledgement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a memorial when you're dead. Right, that's right. That's I right. prefer get, doing things. And, and right. also, you might inspire other people. It's not only you. Take and he was about food. inspiring other people. He helped and a lot of people. And we showed the Brit. Oh, yeah. yeah We've yeah, been yeah. talking about him. Yeah, yeah, we all do. I helped a lot of people. You've helped a lot through of people. Through teaching, through the co-op. Right. Interns, volunteer. It's hard to, but the Jonas, like I was talking, uh, I went to the Requiem last night, the Verdi's Requiem. Have you ever heard it? It's phenomenal. It's so amazing. And Jonas, that was his last work, a double screen projection. Sebastian got me a ticket. It was exquisite. Was it? It was amazing. It was joyful. No, no, no. At this place called The Shed. It was oh, really? huge. Really? 270 people sold out. Really? Sold out? Wow, good it's for way, it, There's this place called the, who knows, uh, the Hudson Yard. Do you know that Hudson Yard? I've heard of it. That's a uh, new place. The Hudson Yard. It's uptown. Yeah, you should go there. It's shocking. Really? Yeah. It's, it has Cartier watches and... Yeah, it's like wealth. Wealth, 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 wealth. And there's Jonas right in there like a pack of dogs. Uh, oh, well, <laughs> actually... Lead dog in the pack. And it was uh, near the High Line. Remember yeah, the High Line? Yeah, yeah, I know. Was, I thought, where are those baby. trees going? And they said, that's the High Line. That's the High Line, baby. And they had a book. So, uh, like, so back to the li living. Yeah. So I, uh, I think um, we gave him a award, and I asked, no, does Jonah, Sebastian, uh, who is his son, who is running the estate with Una, but Sebastian is really. What is old. Sebastian doing now? He's taking, he orchestrated this, because Because Jonas he said died. to me there were some people in Switzerland trying to get a hold of me, and I said, well, you know, I'm easy to find, and I tried to get a hold of him, and I couldn't, so I'm trying to, how do I Sebastian? find out about, yeah, how do I find out about these people in Switzerland? He mentioned it to me, then he dropped it, so. I, I can give you his email, and you write to him. Oh, I love that. Or text him. Uh, Sebastian, I, I call him, but Sebastian's busy, he, he's actually clearing up Jonas's entire, do you know Jonas? I photographed Jonas his archive. Archive in his is house. resilient. And he found a location, and, and I don't know if I can announce it. I don't think they did yet. But he found a location, and he has to pack it and label it. And so, every what's the location? Single, by the time this airs, it'll be Christmas. So, what's the location? 
Um, I think it's going to be an exhibition at Mana. Mana. Mana is this great place in Jersey City. I've been there. I did, um, Chuck Smith, who's another person you should know, Bar I did a film on Barbara Rubin, who's another filmmaker that no one knows about that changed the laws of censorship. She promoted to Flaming Creatures. She did Christmas on Earth. Who's a Barbara double Rubin? screen projection. She's one of my my favorite filmmakers. Who is she? She was um, the actually one of the first people running the film co-op for you know doing the daily operations. She fought all the court cases. She made a sexually explicit a, a film within a film. It's called Christmas on Earth. It's based on the poem by Renvo, where the performers' bodies are all painted, and it has. Uh, it's it, it's what is that? It's performance, and you have color filter, and you play the radio, or the Velvet Underground played live to it. And so Barbara Rubin was this dynamic filmmaker, brilliant, and very young, seventeen years old, eighteen years old, and uh, I've been promoting her film, and Chuck Smith did an incredible documentary, and he showed it at Mana. And I went and went out there. I thought, how do I find New Jer Jersey City? Because I'm so used to this little island. And, uh, and I and went up it, mm. and I loved it. It has a, a great Indian community, food. And food. Really? It's an old factory. It's a uh, huge old factory. And now it's a huge artist space, artist studios. Isn't that fabulous? It's fabulous. We'll wow. do a show out there for you. Yeah, we'll see. Okay, that'd be nice. How They'll about, how about the one on Ludlow Street further down? What's that called? Metrograph. Metrograph. I'd love Tell it. Them. Do I you? Love it. Yeah. I'd like to do something there. I'd like to show Capture there. Do you know those guys? I do. Jake Curlin. Yeah. Let's we'll show that I'd like to show Capture for a benefit for the actors. Well, I'll put you in touch with him and you talk to him. That would be nice. He just shows. He did a huge in December. He showed. The double screen projection of uh, dialogues with Che. He shows all these films we preserve. He just did what do you know? Edward Owen's film. It was uh, from 1968. Melissa curated it, but he's he shows really avant garde films down there. Really, isn't that great? It's a great theater. It's very comfortable. Great bookstore. It's great food. Have you been there? I just walked into the foyer. For That's it. I've never gone to a movie there. I know that uh, Gary they Lucas, another actor recipient, uh, plays the guitar. He was with the, um, ah, just slipped my mind, the uh, the band. The doc, I keep thinking Dr. Pepper, but it wasn't Dr. Pepper. Captain Beefheart. Captain Beefheart. Mm. Uh, Captain Beefheart, yeah. So he plays the music during the, I think they do the Golem down there once a year, the old film, and he plays the guitar for the, the music part, silent film. But, uh, yeah, no, people speak highly of the place. I, I enjoy it when I go down there. I, yeah. My friend Marie Lossier, who's uh, French and does feature length films, I did one about this uh, Cassandra, a gay Mexican Indian wrestler. And it's the most, and they, it's very avant garde. It's amazing. What makes uh, something avant garde? You can't watch it? No, what <laughs> makes it avant garde, it's not produced by Hollywood. There's no special effects like Iron Man, Batman, Spider-Man, no there, the there. Joker, you know, <laughs> where the heads are flying and blood's all over the walls. There's no narrative. No It focus. has, no. There's different ways of telling a story. You can tell a story. There's a beginning, a middle, and an end. There's a romance that ends up together, or there's the superhero and the superhero. That's traditional linear narrative cinema. Avant-garde can tell stories in spiral way like poetry. Like, have you ever read Patti Smith? I really read Patti Smith's new book, and I loved it, The Year really? of the Monkey. And I could relate to her dreams. And sometimes she's sliding in, she's like falling asleep while she's writing, and she's dreaming, and she, you can, but it's so beautifully written that it takes you, it has these incredible descriptions. Really? And it, and Have you it, seen her perform? No. no what about uh, I, I, uh, I, 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 Yes, I have. What am I talking about? 
uh, Patti Smith did a huge benefit for Jonas Mikas for anthology film archives. Really? And when I went to buy her book, she was going really fast. She's kind of a private person, kind of shy, and doesn't speak. And, and she's finding a way. And then I said, I know Jonas Mikas to her. And she looked up and looked me straight in the eye and said, Something like, uh, I know, I love Jonas Mikas. He used to sell film culture at the Chelsea Hotel. And then we, and I said, I run the film co op. And then she talked to me only after I had made that connection. Isn't that great? And I said, I really like your boots because I was sitting at her feet. It was so sold out. And, uh, it, uh, and she said, Oh, yeah, these are Johnny's boots from Alice in Wonderland. She was wearing Johnny Depp's And did she give you a kick in the head? No, she uh. did not. She she was very good because I have a I like Rambo's. Uh, I love Rambo's. And, Poetry. Yes, and Season in Hell is like one of my favorite tortured poems. And he wrote it when he was fourteen. That she was read from Rambo, and that's why I wanted to hear it because she's. Not only reading her own poetry, but she's promoting poets that influenced her. Oh, okay. So there was me? someone taking pictures of her from the post. She was sitting on the floor next to me, click, click, click. And Patty looked down and said, uh, uh, Do you mind not taking pictures while I'm reading? Would you please not do that? Because she's kind of, she's very funny and spontaneous, but she didn't want to be. Uh, but, but that photographer totally ignored her one million photographs later. But uh, that's oh, what I'm happens. Sure. So tell me about Harry Smith. What do you know about Harry Smith? What I know about Harry Smith was that uh, I, I know a lot about Harry Smith. Uh, he, I love his work. I distribute his films. And he grew up in the Puget Sound in Washington State. And his mother taught in an American Indian reservation, and his parents were not into monotheism. So Harry Smith went to the, uh, I, sorry, I forgot the tribe, and Harry learned to write the alphabet for that tribe and write, read their writings and their religion. So Harry Smith, at a very young age, and through the influence of his parents, wasn't had wasn't this conventional normative guy. He had a, a an accepted like he wanted to study anthropology, and uh, because he was interested in all the different uh, dialects and languages and religions, all the religions. And then he went to uh, San Francisco and art of the century, the cinema, and he met like Oscar Fisher and Jerry met all these brilliant filmmakers and decided to become a filmmaker. And he's, I believe, I don't know if he studied at the University of California, but, and Harry started making films right then and there. And his films were connected to the Mandela and, and to um, mysticism. And Harry Smith got a Grammy the year before he died. He collected indigenous sounds through Appalachia, blues and bluegrass. And uh, and the Smithsonian now has his collection. It's called Folkways. It's not even named after Harry. I don't even know if they Was the Smithsonian named after him, Smith? No, no it wasn't. No, but that's the not Harry. But the, the Smithsonian, Smithsonian? It, <laughs> if I could advertise this, okay. Folkways is the best collection of indigenous Sounds I think from the folk south. was no. also with Mo Ash, just and I think white. Mo Ash was a, was a music producer, publisher. It's I, I in think folk so. ways, I think he went to, to Mo Ash. I think Mo Ash created Folkways, and that became the collaboration. I could be wrong about that, but Mo Ash was like a music publisher. You don't publisher. want to be wrong about that. Well, well I, I don't know. We could stand corrected, but I'm just putting the information out there because I think Mo Ash had something to do with that as well. I'm not Moash sure, but I do know Moash. that Harry Smith didn't but have he collected money. All this music. And he I asked this Harry thing. Smith to do a benefit for the cop. We have early abstractions. We and I asked him if he'd do a benefit, and I said, "We'll give you a little of the money 
and we'll do it. And there was this wonderful venue called Film Sharp. And I love that theater. It was big. Oh, that was with Doris Cornish. Did you do something in film charts? Always. always. They should have and Friday Harry nights. said he would do it. And then Harry said, I said, how much money do you want? And he starts telling me all these drugs he wants. Because he likes psychedelic drugs. And I said, forget it, Harry. I can't do that. I can't go that route. I, uh, where am I going to find all the... Forget it. But Harry performances, Harry Smith... And um, Emory Jones has his collection. Right. Had slides. He set up projectors everywhere, so the yeah. whole room was full of this. I put together a show of his of at the Angel Lawrence Foundation with M. Henry Jones. M. Henry yeah, Jones. Well, Harry Smith. Yeah. Yeah. Put did the Harry Smith thing. He had, uh, Tommy Turner was running some of the projectors. Uh, Parker's wife, but Mary. Did he say it was Harry slides? Girl. Yeah, it was definitely a Harry show. Because. What happened is, when you're making films and you're an artist, it's collaboration. You need people to help you. Remind me, I'll and give you a catalog from that show for the film that's co op. I'll, I'll, give it to you. I'll get you one. Yeah. Uh, you need people helping you. Like of course, Harry. that's what I'm saying with the actors. I need well, some and help. The, and M. Henry Jones was helping Harry Smith. He was. And, he was infatuated with and Harry. And so Smith. I liked Harry Smith. And Harry gave us. Do you know John Webb? John He's a biographer. He's doing a. Um, I'll put you in touch with him and see if he's been. I'll put you in touch with him. Yeah, he's doing a bio a book on uh, Harry Smith. But, but uh, the thing I know about Harry is that he started to die of cancer, and he didn't have health insurance or Medicare. And Allen Ginsberg took him to Naropa Center in Colorado so he could get he could get treatment for his. And he cancer. also died in the uh, Chelsea. And in the Chelsea. That's where he lived. Yeah, that's where he lived. He used to get pot. For, I wish I had filmed this. I never did. But because I knew Linda Twig over there. And Linda used to get him pot, give him pot. So I went up to his room and I was with Linda and she was like, <laughs> on the outside. She was like, a, she was a very interesting woman. She was like, total gangster. But uh, so we're knocking on his door. He said, Go away. I don't want to be bothered. I just wish I had a video of that little thing. It was perfect, Harry. And because we went over to see him for a minute, you know, because she was going to get him off. Did he let you in? No, that, not that time. I went in there. They, would, they wouldn't let me photograph the, uh, the room after, or videotape it after he died, but I did photograph it. Do you know who has a beautiful Polaroid that they enlarged like a mural? There's this hotel on 29th Street. Mm -hmm. What's it called? Uh, I can't remember. There's a Polaroid person in the Part Chelsea Hotel who tells everybody. And Broadway. It's a okay. big hotel, and there's a Polaroid that Allen Ginsberg took of Harry Smith drinking a glass oh, of milk. Oh, glass of milk. Milk. Yeah, so that's in Paula's book. Paula did the American Magus book, and it's a book on Harry Smith. And if you go to that book, American Magus, uh, you'll, you'll see that picture of Harry with the milk, the magic trick with the milk. That was great, and um, so. Uh, How are we doing for time here? Uh, <laughs> let's uh, let's talk about the future. What am I doing? Okay, hang on. Um, well, uh, how much time have we got? How, as much as you want. How much? How much have we done already? I have that Almost ten ninety minutes. Okay. Let, let's come, come, bar. Let's uh, let's wrap up in ten minutes. You okay. know why? Because I got to go to the garden meeting. I got them garlic. Do you like garlic? You want Love some? garlic. Whatever you got, we'll take. No, uh, I'm going to love you too. <laughs> Faison. All right. Faison. Come on, Faison. Faison. Uh, so, no, no. Okay, let's talk about the future because uh, we're future, still working you on want certain things. Yeah, I want and to we're going to work on that. We're going to work on that. Uh, I'm going to do uh, the avant garde component, to, right? The avant garde component. I'll do it for you. For the there you go. So let's let's do uh, okay. Let's start thinking about this right now because yeah, for the benefit, we, don't, we only have thirty five people we could nominate, but with the RSVP we have some too. So we have some of them like I have some, some like that woman's you. name. What's what's her name? Uh, the avant garde woman, uh, Bladen. Um, uh, uh, so was there Stormy and what was she? A Storm and who was the other? Storm one? the Hirsch. And oh, Ruth. that would be great. I can read her poetry, or you can have someone. Or uh, Ruth, uh, you can read. But, but Ruth, um, and what, what was Ruth's name? Was it Ruth? The other woman, there was Storm. Barbara Rubin. Barbara Rubin. Would you get Barbara Rubin an award? We can, oh, that would be so great. Yeah, she's New York, right? Oh, my God. So New York. Did you ever live downtown? Yeah, of course they lived downtown. She okay. filmed, uh, filmed uh, 
And you know who else we could, I could get Chuck Smith, who did the documentary, to show a clip of the documentary. Well, let's think about this, because what would be nice is like, that see, this way the book, because we can start the book with it actually right away. Let's we need to do now. two things. Let's start it now. So we need to we're do... We're starting a book every day. Yeah, time. we're doing two books. We're doing the small one, the bio book for the Acker Awards, which we'll start now. We'll have, uh, you know, the people you've already mentioned, the two women you've mentioned. And then we'll have, uh, we should Do work we, on the, the next Marie version of, of Captured. Oh, can we include Carol Lee? Because she lived on uh, Twin Lakes. Carol pretty famous, but. Oh, uh, is she too famous? But I don't let's think see so. Let's Marie see Mankin, Story I, mean, I, I, I don't try to get uh, artists that have already pretty, very stable careers. Carol Lee's got a pretty stable yeah, major she, career. So she's she, she, got she, a museum or house yeah, in New Paltz. She really doesn't Tomorrow. need the, the actors. We need women like that need the actors. We need people, artists. Barbara need Rubin. Barbara Rubin. Storm de Hirsch. Storm de Hirsch, yeah. Marie Mankin. And so those would be three that we could have a little something written about. Yeah. That's why we need I to start working it. on the book. Yeah, it's you can write it. So let's start working on this booklet now for the actors, because I also have like a Dominican guy who's a playwright, who's really great. Because I'm trying to spread this thing out so that it's more ethnic. And then the other thing I'll do is I'll put you in touch with Swed, with the uh, Harry Smith, and see if he's interested in that, because you might have the information you can feed him. Because he was probably early in the filmmaker co-op, right? You probably have a list of. You know what would be interesting is do you have a list of the filmmakers co-op people? Of course, they're online though. Have you, check out our website, www.film-makerscoop.com. Film dash, the dash is what Joan must put in and everyone will say, I can't find your website. Film-makerscoop.com. Yeah, and we have the most, it's H-U-N-C-O-T. From Poland, they, it's all volunteer, from Warsaw. They do the most phenomenal job on that website. Really? So check out that website. So let me ask you and a question. And check out my website. Is your website accessible from other countries and other people? Like yes, Poland can add to it? Brussels, Brazil. Can they add to your website? No, no, no. Because that's chaos and that's the way to get hacked. And yeah. when you're hacked, it can crash you and you're gone. Okay. Forget other, no, you don't want everyone. That's, it, it's like even the cathedrals had a plan. They had a community, they had a plan, a structure. You need a structure if you have the, everyone coming in. It. Yeah, because I want to build a website, like the Acker website, where you could actually have it being like a big bio website. So you could actually go there and get like the booklets that are already done and then just kind of expand out from there. Like if there's movies that other people have done, if we could put them up there, people could go to M.M.'s part and look up her movie. I like to do something like that at a certain point. Maybe that, that's, linking. That's yeah, linking, linking would be fine. Linking is fine. Uh, like the people that designed our website also did Harvard Film Archive's website. Oh. And they do a phenomenal job. Very but they do right? the Washington Post website. So the, the man never sleeps. He's like you. He's on and on. Uh, but he's a, super expensive. No, he, he, for us, he wasn't. Really? He was free. He came in and I had a contract with someone else and he said, I could, I, he has a passion for cinema. Film people are very passionate people, underground film people, experimental, avant-garde. Wow. And uh, so he said, I'll help. You need, if you let me design it, so he designed it. And is it accessible to people? Oh, yeah. It's okay. accessible. And uh, so the future is we're going to do two books for you. And I'm trying to finish a film on Jack and Peter. Can you right. believe it? I'm very, I, because Jack Waters and Peter Kramer, this Naked Eye Cinema, where they, they caught right, the ABC, it. No yeah, Rio, right, LA right. production, Camber where Bowler, they Samoa. La Petite Versailles, yeah. they're a vital part. And they really Acker were in the early days, part. yeah, and they're Acker Award recipients. There's a lot of avant-garde, uh, as long as Naked, Naked Eye Cinema is. Um, other people from uh, uh, Naked Eye Cinema. Yeah, yeah so that's what I, I got to finish it. It takes me forever. I'm not yeah. like you. I'm, I well, edit, and then I shoot some more, and I edit, and I shoot on film, which takes forever. Sometimes they, uh, it's, uh, it's overexposed or underexposed, but I like that. And Joel Schlemmer was an amazing filmmaker. So the future is more. Future is more. 
And you see, that's why I would like to see the Howell organization become more functional and become actually like an art. Are you talking about the Howell Gallery? Yeah. I, I like the Howell Gallery. I mean, I went to Tessie's Freeland show. A lot of friends have had shows there. Gail Thatcher, this Gail crap. Thatcher, a Acker love, recipient. Tessa, an Acker recipient. Carlo, an Acker recipient. I know. Kathy Hayden Guest, an Acker recipient. See that? You've got it yeah, covered. Building and a community. You, have, you and Elsa had a show at the Howe Gallery. Yes, we did. Beautiful show. Yeah, I should, maybe in the future I should have a show here. Yeah, why not? Maybe with Anne or something. Yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah, why not? Know, yeah, let's talk about it. There's lots we can do. There's lots. Change history. We better wrap up because I got to run. Yeah, so uh, you got to run. So uh, what we do is we we always end on a happy note. So we sing happy trails. You sing and I'll nod my head. No, <laughs> everybody's got to pitch in. Happy, happy trails to you until we meet again. Come on, Elsa. Happy, happy trails, trails to you until we meet again. Okay. For until next Hooray. time, fans. Thank you very much. This is Clayton Patterson signing off for the 8-Ball Radio Show. Today we had the absolute pleasure, the honor, the prestige endowed upon us was M.M. Sarah. Thank you, M.M. Thank you, Clayton. Patterson. And Maurice and Elsa Renta. So thank you very mm -hmm. much. And off we go. Mm -hmm. And adios, amigos. Thank you. Mm -hmm.